Ooh, hello there, my YouTube gang. What's up? It's Johnny Versity. Again. Before I start, quick shout out to a website called Genocidal Race Trader. Check it out! Now, in today's video, we're gonna deal with two Palestinian chicks. The first, Captain Backdoor Woman. Shut the front door! And second, Sergeant Major Obnoxious. Danny, Danny, Danny. Who tried to do a rebuttal video to a video made by one Danny Ayalon titled... <laughs> Which is that thing there, called the West Bank looking from the East, or Judea and Samaria looking from the past. Now, Danny's video dealt with the terms Occupied territories, 67 borders, and the allegedly illegal settlements. Where he made the legal case that as far as international law goes, the West Bank should not be considered occupied territory, but rather disputed territory, making the settlements legal. And he based this assertion on five historic facts. One, there was never a sovereign state called Palestine. Two, no international borders were ever ratified in the area because the Arabs rejected the partition plan. Three, Jews got an international legal recognition for the right to establish their own state in their historic homeland. Four, the West Bank was captured in self-defense. And five, it was not captured from Palestinians, but rather from Jordan, who've held it since 1949. All of which leading to an interpretation that says that legal definition for the West Bank according to international law is really the same as in so many other areas where there are or were territorial disputes but which are not defined as occupied. For example, Zubara, the Tams Islands, the Western Sahara, amongst many others. They are not considered occupied territories but rather disputed territories. And therefore, the presence and construction of Israeli settlements in the West Bank should not be considered illegal. Now, obviously, the Palestinian answer was swift, factual, and built on solid counter-arguments for each of these points. Okay, except this one, this one, and this one. Oh, and the conclusion itself altogether. However, the rest was addressed with powerful statements based on Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh no, you didn't. What the hell did you just say? Rhetorical crutches made of I don't know what you're smoking, Danny, but I'd like to try some. Well, maybe Danny is an alien from outer space. Didn't your mummy teach you any better? Very articulate. Yes. Yeah. And What? Exquisite mind skills. In 1967, there was no Arab nation or state by the name of Palestine. And and picking on Danny's cartoons of Arabs and Muslims as gun-toting fanatics <laughs> firing shots into the air <laughs> hell-bent on destroying Israel <laughs> or stupidly sitting smoking water pipes <laughs> are racist stereotypes and not any kind of racist, no. They are equivalent to Nazi anti-Semitic propaganda. You know where... Jews were depicted as evil creatures with long noses conspiring to take over the world. Oh, I know, you mean stuff like this. Which is how Arabs and Muslims depict Jews in their daily newspapers. And I know that you know that in Europe... Such anti-Semitic caricatures were used to dehumanize and vilify Jews. We all know what happened then. So, anything to say for yourself? Shut the front door! In any case, point number one. Danny starts with a simple but extremely important question. Why are people born? Oh, come on, not that one. Why do they die? No, not that one. Why do they spend so much of the intervening time wearing digital watches? Okay, okay, for real. From whom did Israel capture the West Bank? From the Palestinians? Yeah. No. What? In 1967, there was no Arab nation or state by the name of Palestine. Actually, was there ever? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt, all right? Or will you deny that the pyramids exist too? Oh, so I guess you disagree. But I hope you know that to disprove that point, you'll have to prove that there was a Palestine before or at 1967, right? Yeah. Well, okay, go ahead. Palestine was the name used to describe the area between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. Well, no. The region called by foreigners, imperialists, and colonialists 
Palestine never had set borders. It referred to a general area in the Levant. For instance, this is how Romans saw it. This is how Crusaders saw it. This is how Ottomans saw it. This is how the UN saw it. And this is how you see it. Wait, where is Israel there? In any case, you were saying... In ancient Greece, Herodotus referred to the district of Syria called Palestine. Both the Roman and Byzantine empires referred to the area as Palestine. And Palestine became a province of the Ottoman Empire. And when the British occupied Palestine, they called it the British Mandate of Palestine. You schmuck. Okay, first of all, the Brits didn't name it. The mandate was an administrative lease given by the League of Nations to the Brits in 1922. By the way, to do this... But the real issue here is that you're saying that the name Palestine was used by all those different colonialist empires when referring to a general region in the area. And that's your proof that Palestine existed and Palestinians, yes, a people lived in it. Listen, if I was to ask a descendant of the Aztecs, the Mayan or Native Americans for proof of land claims, do you think that his proof will be that the people who invaded his land called it America? I mean, to me, that would prove that he's, well, not native. I mean, according to you, Jesus was... Born in Bethlehem, a city in Palestine. Oh, wait a minute. Does that make Jesus a Palestinian? No, it makes you illiterate. After all, opening his book says clearly that he was born in Judea, also known a few passages later as the land of Israel. Wait a minute. Does that make Jesus a Palestinian? And do you know why there's no mention of Palestine there? Because again, the name you're using is a colonialist name referring to some area in the Levant that was passed between foreign powers all the way up to the mandate where your national identity only starts formulating, bringing with it pogroms against Jews, violent Arab revolts, collaborations with the Nazis, and two partitions of the land. First Jordan, and then the partition plan which your grand Granddaddy's rejected, starting a civil war that then escalated into a regional war that ended in 1949 with ceasefire lines that you now call the 67 border, plus an extra few hundred thousand Jews in Israel that fled or were expelled from Arab states, plus Egypt controlling Gaza and Jordan controlling the West Bank, all the way up till 1967. Which is why... In 1967, there was no Arab nation or state by the name of Palestine. You simply want to deny my ancestors and I ever existed? Well, no, but with documentations, archaeological artifacts, a unique culture and heritage going back a minimum of 3,200 years, the Jewish nation and its culture are indigenous to this land. The native Palestinians, if you will. The Palestinian national identity, however, was carefully crafted less than a hundred years ago and crystallized maybe 30 or 40 years ago and even better pinned on the descendants of foreign colonizers and how do we know that your ancestors were colonizers well immediately after the seventh century palestine became predominantly arab and how do you think that happened dummy after all muslims were imperialists in the century after Muhammad's death, they conquered most of the known world in one century. Naya, it, it is possible they, you call it conquer. I think they, they, they were trying to uh, uh, spread Islam. <laughs> well, they were, but they weren't doing it by singing Kumbaya. Anyway, when your ancestors, the Muslim colonialists, invaded the land, they too adopted the foreign name of the region. Only because Arabic doesn't have a P in it, they couldn't pronounce it. So they changed it from Palestine to... Its Arabic name, Philistine. And maybe this name... Became known to the entire Arabic-speaking world. But this... Arabic-speaking world... You speak of only came in numbers during the 19th century. After over a thousand years of leaving this land barren, desolate, and almost entirely unpopulated. And even as Zionists stretch their hands, offering cooperation and help to develop the region, one of the forefathers of Palestinian nationalism answered, I would prefer that the country remain impoverished and barren for another hundred years until we ourselves are able to develop it on our own.
Now, honestly, what I find fascinating is that the entire Palestinian identity and indeed the refugee problem was manufactured overnight by Arab ultranationalists and Muslim extremists not as a tool to create a Palestine, but rather as a tool to destroy Israel. A job too many of you are still keen on performing. Oh, and what about the other point? Well, you'll have to wait for the next video for that. Meanwhile, come and shout at me on my Facebook page and of course like, fav and share. So, like always, my beloved YouTube gang, peace, love, harmony, have a good one people, I love you all. Trying to rewrite history is not very nice.